Hello, my name is James Ferguson and welcome to a tutorial of the InterArctic web application. So this is a web application for viral whole genome sequencing utilizing the Arctic network pipelines. So this is the GitHub for the, for the project uh, containing all of the code uh, and we also have releases which make installation a breeze. So to follow the installation, uh, all we have to do is follow these steps here. So it starts off with downloading a file. So let's do that, copy that, go to our terminal, and I'm going to download it to this particular folder. You can choose whichever makes sense for your system. So on Linux, we can copy paste, uh, we can paste into a terminal with Control Shift V, and there is our command. And I will speed this up so you don't have to watch the entire download. Okay, so the next step is extraction. We're going to extract this file. So we can see in our instructions, it is just a tar extract command. So control C, go to our terminal, control shift V, enter. And this will take a little while, so I'll speed this up too. Okay, so now that is done, we can go into our interarctic uh, directory and look inside. So the two most important things here are this run.sh script. So this is what we use to run into Arctic and this primer schemes folder. Uh, this contains all of the primer schemes that we've included. Uh, uh, Arctic, the 2.5 KB Eden and the 1.25 KB Midnight primer sets, uh, as well as the Arctic Ebola primer sets. Uh, if you want your own primer set included, just let us know. Okay, so to start into Arctic, all we do is run this script. You can do this with a dot forward slash and then run dot sh, hit enter. You'll get some things in the terminal. And then you need to keep this terminal open to have the web application working. Um, at any time, you can hit control C and it will close the, the uh, application and into Arctic will stop working. So I can show you, hit control C make sure everything is, is killed and closes safely. So we can just uh, run that again to start it up. And this is the link that we want to go to in your web browser. And a quick way to do that in Linux is just right click and go open link and it will open up in your default browser. Uh, mine being Chrome in this case. So this is the home screen of Interarctic. And the, the first two things you wanna do is you can look at the about section. This gives you a little bit of information plus links to our GitHub documentation and the preprint. So if you ever have any issues, uh, we'll let you know now that you can go to GitHub and then in GitHub, you can go to the issues tab and then go, uh, you can have a little look and see if your issue is already here or you can go new issue and you can create the issue and we'll get back to you as soon as we can to fix it. Okay, back to Antarctic. So at any time you can hit home and it goes back to the home screen. Now the very first thing you wanna do is set the locations for your input data. By default, these will be forward slash data and forward slash data sample barcodes. This might be useful when you're, if you're running a gridiron or a Promethean uh, and potentially a minine, but most likely if you're not running on a oxidantopore sequencing device, these will be need, need to be changed. So we can do that by uh, you know, going to where your data is saved. Now in this case, I'm going to run a test data set that you can download. Um, the instructions are here for downloading your test data set. It's mostly the same. You create your data where you want to put it. You download that file and then you extract it and remove the uh, tarball. Uh, and this will be uh, in a particular format that you can follow along uh, in further detail in this text but assuming that you have already downloaded this file. So I have mine located in this example data um, folder. And in it, I have the sequencing uh, information, which is located in something like this, where it has the fast fives and the fast queue and the sequencing summary. So this is the same structure that the sequencer will spit out. And you kind of want to keep that. Um, and then my output, 
directory will be in the top directory of, of whichever uh, run that I'm running. So in this one particular folder, you might have multiple runs and that will get automatically detected by InterArctic. So we'll see that in a minute. So uh, the second thing uh, option here is the uh, sample barcode. So these are CSV files that we use to custom name each individual sample uh, in the analysis. So if we go into this folder and we look at our sample barcode, you can see that we have a sample name and then the barcode that it's attached to. So in this case, this is a native barcode three for sample three, native barcode four for sample four, etc. So these are comma separated, no space, flat files that um, our system will read uh, to custom name all of your samples. Okay, so to get these, we can, if we're in that folder in a terminal, we can use pwd and we can get the directory of our example data. So you want the, the top data. This is the top folder for where all your data is located. So we can do control shift C to copy that. And then we can do control V to paste that in. And then similarly, we want the path for this. So that is just the same directory plus this. So we can highlight that control shift C and then control V and we just take away this little slash. Now, when we hit confirm, it will save and you'll never have to set this again unless you change the directories. Now, if you give it the wrong uh, information and hit confirm, it will tell you because it does a quick little check. So you know that if you've done it right that it doesn't give you any complaints. Okay, now we're going to add a job. So we hit add job and then here we can um, see all of the parameters that we're going to set for our job. Some of these have some info tool tips that you can highlight uh, with for some more information and of course there is more information in our uh, documentation from installing from source or uh, how to use InterArctic. It gives you, you know, information about file structures and all of that kind of thing. So yeah, if you want more in-depth information, please see our documentation. Okay, so let's start a run. So we're gonna call this you know, test run. And then uh, we select our experiment. So in this case, it's this FLFL1. Uh, it has multiple samples. So that creates this dropdown for the CSV file, which we select. So these two, all the, all the data that's housed in these two are populated from those two directories that we gave at the start. Um, and then an output folder, you know, it's optional. I like to give it uh, some kind of output, so I'll just call this test. Uh, then this is where you select your virus. Um, so this is for Ebola, this is for coronavirus. So in this case, we use the Eden primers. This is the uh, directory and schema for it, which are auto-populated from our current ones. And then we use the ligation prep in this one, and then we can select the pipeline. So Nanopolish uses the FastQ and the Fast5 data to do variant detection. Medaka just uses the FastQ to do variant detection. And if you use both, it will run, it will create two jobs, uh, first running Nanopolish and then running Medaka. Uh, so you'll get two different uh, sets of outputs. Um, and it runs them sequentially, one after the other. So in this case, we're just gonna run Medaka. And then, you know, most of the time you won't have to change anything here, but there are advanced options. Um, so this is where you can change, for example, the number of CPUs you use. So if you've got a very beefy machine, you can increase this. Um, so I've got eight CPUs on this laptop, so I'm gonna increase this to six. You don't necessarily wanna use all of them. Uh, and then now that that's done, double check everything's there. If something's wrong, it'll most likely give you an error. And then we can submit our job. This takes us to the progress page. And you can see it's running the gather command here, which is the first command in the Arctic pipeline. At any time, we can see the job parameters here, explaining where everything is and where our output folder um, for our data will be. So we can actually have a look at that. Control C, open a terminal, and we can have a look in that folder. And you can see that it's starting to uh, do the demultiplexing and this is where all your data will be located. So it's onto the demultiplexing now. This, this gray box will continue to show and it will show a lot, lot of text by the end of it. 
If any errors that a tech editor should tell you, um, at any time or if something goes wrong, you can always abort your job and uh, it will kill the processes and it'll also give you the option to delete the data so you don't have lots of bits of data left over. Uh, and then you can also queue up jobs. So you can go back home and you can see the queued uh, jobs here and you can always add another job and it will just get, once this one's done, it will run the next one after it. So, and you can always go back and check on the job to see how it's going. And once it's completed, you will have a go to output button. And we'll see that very soon. Okay, now that the run has completed, you can see a button to go to the output, or you, if there were issues, you get a bought job. So you can see here the output for the, min, uh, the demultiplexing command that happened, and then the minine command for each individual barcode. So starting with barcode three, and then all the way through, and you get all of this output for each one. So this is the regular output that you get from the Arctic pipeline for Emadaka run. And then the very last step is doing some plotting on the VCF and um, getting coverage statistics. And then it is done. So looking at the output, we can click go to output. And this is our output page. So to view a particular sample, you click this and select the sample you wish to look at. So sample three, for example, we can hit view and it will show you something called a cover plot or um, a coverage and variant plot. So the light blue and pink here are each pool of primers and the coverage associated with that particular amplicon. So at the top we have pool one and the bottom we have pool two. Each one of these is 2.5 KB um, and it was ligation so it's quite smooth. These dotted lines here are the combined uh, coverage between the overlaps. So you can see uh, this variant here, for example, in orange. Uh, this is a single nucleotide variant and it's probably this one here. Um, it is on the interface between these two amplicons and you can see it is common to both, not just one, so that helps you see if there's an error or not, for example. Same with this one here, it's on the interface, it's not just on one uh, amplicon, it's on both. Um, and then uh, this dotted line here is the 20x minimum coverage required to call variants. Um, and this is of course the position of the genome, coronavirus being just under 30,000 KB. This is a variant table, you can copy and paste this into Excel or whatever if you, if you, if you wish, but it's from the fast pass, uh, the pass uh, VCF file in the output. And then at the end, you can download the consensus file uh, for this. So you can see here, test run sample three, uh, uh, barcode three. I can just drop this into say my downloads folder. And then I can go to something like Pangolin. <clears throat> I can show this in my folder and I can drag this across into here and then hit start analysis and you can always do more than one of these at a time and it will analyze all of them and while that's that's running we can look at the other data so to go to the next one you just select it here view and it shows you that these plots and variants are all in the output folders um, and then, you know, if we look at something that has an indel, sample 12 in the example data, this blue line here indicates an indel, as you can see, it's this one here. So um, it's blue instead of orange, which is single nucleotide variants. Uh, and each one you can download its individual consensus files. So There's a sample 12, barcode 12, and the consensus file. Uh, and here you can see that it's finished running and it gave it the lineage A2.2 .2. and um, with Pangolin you can look in, um, you can look at extra information about that particular lineage and see the prevalence. So this is from Australia and you can see it was most prevalent in Australia from the sequences that we uploaded um, and this was, you know, back in uh, April last year. Arctic. Now, 
Uh, if you wish to go to the actual raw data files, it will be located uh, in that folder we saw before. And in this case, it's in test that we call is what we called it. And each one of these is the samples. So we can go into say sample 12 and we can see all of the files are created. You can do ls, ltr, and that will show you the order in which they were created. So it started off with uh, the BAM and then all the way through to the variant calling. This is the past variant file, so all the variants that are actually called. You can use zcat to have a look at that. Um, sorry, zcat. Sorry, zcat. <laughs> Uh, and you can see um, all of the information here with the variants. And then you can see the consensus file here and the cover plots are here as well. So in this case, uh, we can go to my data, um, do, 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 example data, test and in barcode 12 and the cover plot PNG, and that's the same plot here. So you can save that for your records. Thank you for listening, and if you have any troubles, remember you can contact us on GitHub, um, and uh, good luck.